Receivables. Accounts receivables are normally expected to be collected within a relatively short period of time, such as 30 to 60 days. Accounts receivables are associated with amounts with work that we've done in amounts that we have billed to customers after we have completed the work. You have two scenarios um, that you'll generally use accounts receivable. When you do work, you bill the customer, a debit to accounts receivable, and a credit to revenue. And then when you do accrued revenue, where you are billing the customer in essence, and again, that is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenue. Notes receivable are amounts that customers owe for which a formal written instrument of credit has been issued. This will be a promissory note, some type of contract. There's um, characteristics of a promissory note in this written instrument that have to be there and present. However, there is no general um, format for this. It's just making sure that you've hit all the elements that are required for this to be a legal binding document. Notes receivables issued over accounts receivable actually create a little more leverage for the person who owns the notes receivable simply because now you have a legal document binding the person who owes you the money. There are other receivables expected to be collected within one year and they're classified as current assets. If collection is expected beyond one year, these receivables are classified as non-current assets and reported under the caption investments. Examples of other receivables include interest receivable, taxes receivable, and receivables from officers or employees. I would, however, like to take a moment here to talk about receivables from officers or employees. This is generally going to be when somebody gets an advancement on their pay or when the officer takes a loan from the company. Remember, back to Chapter 1 when we talked about ethics and things like that, that this particular item can get you into trouble if you forgive a loan to an officer and take it off the books. These are things that should be paid back. So we will classify these as investments, non-current assets. Now, there comes a time when we have to say a receivable is not going to be collectible. Companies often sell their receivables to other companies. This is called factoring the receivable. And the buyer of the receivable is called a factor. For an example of this would be I have a credit card from Bank of America. I didn't pay it. Um, it's been sitting there for so long that they just want to attempt to try to collect any money they can. So they sell my debt to another company for pennies on the dollar. And then that company then pursues action to try to collect the money. So if I have a $7,000 debt that's factored out to another company for $3,000, if that company manages to collect anything above $3,000 from me, then now they have free and clear revenue. So we, call, we refer to this as factoring. This is not to be confused with collection efforts. Regardless of how careful a company is in granting credit, some credit sales will be uncollectible. The operating expense recorded from an uncollectible receivable is called bad debt expense. Uncollectible accounts expense or doubtful accounts expense. Bad debt expense is going to be generally the one that you hear the most in small businesses simply because large companies use the allowance for doubtful accounts method when they have a lot of accounts receivable and it's really hard to have the manpower to go through and look through every single account every single day. There are some indications that an account may be uncollectible including the following. The receivable is past due. The customer does not respond to the company's attempts to collect. The customer files for bankruptcy. The customer closes its business. And the company cannot locate the customer. This is where somebody says, there's your sign. You're generally not going to be able to collect if you have some of the following things happening here. The direct write-off method for accounting for uncollectible receivables records bad debt expense only when an account is determined to be worthless. The allowance method records bad debt expense by estimating uncollectible accounts at the end of the accounting period. 